Good evening everyone. Welcome. My name is Dina and I am here on Sunday, August 7th to give you a bit of a stitching update. I'm actually catching up for a couple of days because I stitched yesterday on Hawk Run Hollow and I stitched pretty late in the day and I had stopped on it thinking that I would come back today and stitch even more on it because my goal this month, one of my goals for August, is to finish this block. However, <laughs> I looked at how many prompts I have left to keep meeting and uh, I, I have a number of them that require me to stitch on different things. So I think I will postpone this. I hope to get back to it and stitch the whole block, but it's okay if I don't. It's not for a gift or it doesn't have a deadline or anything like that. I wanted to share my progress I made on it, even though it was a small amount. I was stitching on this for a prompt that only required 200 stitches to get the maximum points. And so I did 220 to finish off this little road that I was working on. So when I picked it up, I had a parked thread right up here, right under the house and I just wound up stitching this entire road in that color. And so I need to come back over here now and do some uh, heel um, work, you know, where it's got some little cross hatches over here in that color. But I finished 220 stitches. It was enough for a prompt. And I decided that was, that was okay. I wasn't gonna work on it again today. I had one prompt left in a group of five that I was working on, and it will run out this week on Friday. Um, so I have to have it finished and posted before Friday. So I decided that's the one I'm gonna pick up and do. That will finish that whole challenge for that week, and that's good. The prompt was to stitch on something that either represented travel or uh, royalty for Hawk Run Hollow. I forgot to mention that. And so when I did Hawk Run, I did traveling because I said I would like to travel to somewhere as nice as Hawk Run Hollow, but I also mentioned that throughout the piece, it has roads going different places. And so you can travel down the road. So that's uh, the prompt that I decided to use the 200 stitches for and move along. So the last um, prompt I worked on today was in a different challenge and that prompt said to stitch on a whip that you have that requires multiple types of fiber or flosses and um, this one does this is my Miss Christmas Eve by Mirabilia and it does call for DMC and it does call for Karen water lilies and so those are two different kinds of fibers and uh, I will be using both of them. I haven't put any Karen Water lily Lilies in the piece yet, but I just got started on it, as you know, for my Christmas starts. So today I picked it up and I actually needed, uh, again, I needed 200 stitches and um, I wound up getting 200 and, um, 73 so here's where I stopped I I could have gone on to 300 and gotten more points for that but it's late <laughs> I'm a little tired um, we we had a busy day today we did our uh, our church activities and then we had a reception to go to today that was for our 50th wedding anniversary of some friends of ours and then my husband and I had been wanting to see the movie Elvis, and so we saw that this afternoon, evening. And then, of course, I had to cook dinner, so I didn't get a whole lot of stitching time today, which is okay, but I met the prompt, and I got part of her bodice done, and I love that. So um, I have a funny to tell you in case you didn't pick up on it. You may have. Some of you are very, very sharp with what you look at. But when I showed this as my Christmas whip and all I had was the green for the skirt, <laughs> I showed it this way, I believe. 
if I'm not mistaken. It actually should have been this way because that is the page break. That's what I was starting at, was that page break going up. So today, when I started to put the bodice on it and I looked at the pattern, I got tickled because I thought, I think I showed that upside down. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. Now it's right side up for sure. Well, that's my stitching report for today. A little bit yesterday, a little bit today, um, and that's awesome. I'm really, well, the Hawk Run Hollow was my second piece that I worked on yesterday. You've already seen the first one, which was my Autumn Bell Pull. I did finish that letter, and so then after that, I did Hawk Run. So today, I got a little bit of stitching in, not as much as I would have liked, but um, every stitch counts, as you know. <laughs> so tomorrow, what are my plans? Well, I'm not sure exactly. I have additional prompts that I need to meet. I'm supposed to have a good day for stitching tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> you never know anymore. <laughs> I have nothing on the calendar. Nothing. So watch something happen. <laughs> something will come up. Um, but if it comes out that I really do get to stitch a little bit tomorrow, I have an idea of what I'd like to do. I would really like to pull out Nativity and see if I can't work on Nativity um, and take that wing to the page break. Because if I do that, that is a whip go goal. And so I, uh, I can mark that off and that would be awesome. So that's my hope. That's my hope for tomorrow. I won't say plan because things have been kind of iffy lately with all that's going on. But um, that's what I'll try to do. Whatever happens, I'll share it with you. So, in the meantime, happy stitching, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. My name is Dina, and it is Tuesday. It is August 9th, and I'm here to give you a bit of a report about what I've been doing. Well, for the last two days, I decided to work on something that was not only a goal for myself for the month, but it's been a whip-go goal for a long time. And it is Nativity. Now, this is a Teresa Wentzler, and originally on my whip-go goal, I said I wanted to finish this entire angel. And I started working on it, and I got to the page break, on one side and I still needed to do the other side and I've been working on that and in the course of working on this piece what I have determined is that I need to do these people at least their first layer of clothing out here to place them before I wrap the rest of the angel wings around them just to make sure that I haven't miscalculated or miscounted or anything like that because these people are in the front and so they need to make I need to make sure they're going to be appropriately placed before I work around them because if I have to fudge anything it'll be in the wings so I changed my whip go goal recently and said I wanted to bring it all the way to the page break on both sides and that would be my whip go goal for the year and I did that. So here's where I got to today. So both wings are now all the way to the page break. And in order to do that and place everything correctly, I had to do the angel's hand right here. And all of the skin in this piece is one over one. So the, the face, and the hand are one over one. And they are already backstitched. They're very pale, they're very, the hand is kind of in the background, it's kind of hidden in the wing itself. But I hope you can see it well enough there. There you go. Anyway, there we are. So isn't that something? <laughs> now, I didn't include the back stitching on the wings because I wanna wait and finish the whole wing before I do that. Um, 
so that'll be, you know, okay. But what an accomplishment. I am thrilled to death. So my next goal on this, even though it's not a whip go goal, my next goal is probably going to be to come back up here and bring these borders down to the page break. And then I can start on these figures out here in front because they're gonna transition down to the next page. They'll, they'll cross over. But I love it. I think it's turning out beautifully. Of course, there's no beading or uh, specialty fibers in it yet, but there will be eventually. <laughs> I did enjoy working on it. I stitched in the last two days, I stitched 577 stitches in that, in that wing over here plus the hand. So that's right here, sorry, there you go. Um, that's how far I've gotten, and I just think it's beautiful. I think it's a very majestic piece. Um, and the colors are very muted. They're not bright and in your face. They're quite, quite lovely. Um, they almost look like a tapestry to me, but I think it's just really, really pretty. This is a Charles Craft 28 count um, off-white even weave. You know, it's just something I bought and had in my stash a long time ago. And when I started this over, I was just looking for the right color in 28 count because my 32 count first start, you know, that one over one face didn't look right. And so that's what I did to, to correct that. <laughs> okay, so that is my stitching for the last couple of days. It's been, oh, it's been quite a busy week. Um, and... So I've had meetings and I've had uh, luncheons and things, everything at church is gearing back up for the fall. And so I've had quite a number of things to do. Um, I was actually at a meeting today and a luncheon meeting um, and had a wonderful time. And uh, I'm looking forward to the activities that are coming up in the coming year. So that was a fun thing to do but I was really tickled to be able to hit that whip go goal. So you can see my whip go board over here. I will turn you just a little bit more. There you go, so you can see it a little bit better. But um, this was this month, one of this month's calls and it's already done. This spring quilt is my new start for August and I now have been able to blue out negativity. So um, that's a good thing. Uh, I have a potential here if she calls number one for, for the end, you know, for uh, September. But otherwise, when I finish this new start for August, I will have another whip go. Isn't that awesome? Pretty, pretty excited about that. So now I want to go back to this green square here number 18 which was my new start for july halloween quaker and i want to work more on that large motif because i said i didn't want to start my august new start until i finished my july new start and could mark it off the board as well i may change my mind since this one will give me a bingo but that's okay <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> but i appreciate you letting me share with you my progress on nativity it's been around for a long time and I'm really, really happy that I'm making progress. And I think the next time or two that I stitch on it, when I can get the whole thing to the page break, oh, what a celebration that will be. Um, because that'll be the first half of it done. And I think that would be awesome. All right, I'm going to let you get back to what you were doing. Thank you for letting me check in with you this evening. And uh, until next time, happy stitching. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. My name is Dina. It is Wednesday. It is August the 10th, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about my stitching progress. I wanted to let you know that I had decided to go ahead and work today on finishing up my whip go goal for my new start that was called in July. And I'll remind you of what that was. Halloween Quaker and my whip go goal 
was to stitch this first very large motif to, co to completion. So I started in this corner and stitched the little one first, and then I started working on this one. And I got probably a third or so of it done um, when I got started on it. So I began working back on it yesterday evening, and I got some of it done. And then I realized it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't matching up. When I went to um, work on the next little section, so I had the top section done and I had come down and I had started working on the section to the side and it was half a stitch off, one thread off. So, I had to look back and find the error, and I found it, and I had to frog. I had to frog out half of what I had stitched. It was painful. <laughs> it was painful. So, I did it, I frogged it out, and then after I frogged it out, I stitched again back to where I had frogged, and I put it away. That was yesterday. So this morning when I got up and I got ready to stitch, I decided I wanted to hang in there and finish this Whip Go goal because I don't want to start my next new start for Whip Go for this month of August until I finish this one. So again today, I got off in my counting somehow and on a Quaker design that is symmetrical, you really can't fudge it you can see it instantly. And I know that from past experience. So I had to frog again. This time I caught it a lot quicker. It wasn't that bad, but I remember texting a friend of mine and saying, I'm ready for my frog to just, uh, you know, jump off somewhere else. I need him to leap away. But finally I quit frogging and I got it finished. So I did finish my Whip Go Goal. I got the first motif stitched. So I am very, very pleased with it. I think it looks great. And I am just tickled to death. This, I'm using the DMC, uh, not the Overdyed. So this one for me, uh, is a blend of 310 and 844, I think. And so it's a dark gray and black. So that turns out looking almost like a charcoal board, um, blackboard or something. The, it's not a solid, solid black because that gray lightens it a bit. But it, it does appear to be a little bit darker to me than the picture is. The picture is more of a dark gray, but mine is almost black. So that makes me feel even better about this fabric, that everything is gonna show up well on my fabric. So there you go. That is my first uh, Whip Go Goal on, on this piece. And I am thrilled to have it net. So now whenever I'm ready, I can start my next new start for Whip Go for the month of August because I have, in this week, I finished my Nativity Goal and I finished this July Goals. The, it was the only goal I had left for July for Whip Go. So now I have one goal of August and that is my spring quilt and I have to have a new start and stitch the border across the top. And when I do that, I'll have a bingo. I'll have a whip go. So I will update my whip go board once I start that and get the bingo so you'll be able to see it. But here we go. There's my Halloween Quaker by Leela's Studio. And thank you to the lovely lady who wrote me and then explain to me that it is Leela's studio. So I don't know how she knows that, but she told me and I'm believing her. And so I'm calling it Leela's 
studio. It's a Halloween Quaker. A whip go goal accomplished. Yay! <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you get back to what you were doing, and I will come back and talk with you again when I have something to share. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Dina, and it is Thursday, August the 11th, and I'm here to give you a brief stitching update. I had a wonderful day today. I went and played canasta with five additional ladies, and we had a great day. Uh, we all brought snacks, and we had a sort of a brunchy um, time, you know, meal together and played canasta. And I had a great time, and my team won, yay! <laughs> we, we won uh, significantly, it was wonderful. Anyway, when I got home, um, I had an errand to do with my husband, and we did that and had dinner. So I didn't get to start stitching today until after supper. So I looked at my prompts to see what is it that I need to do, and is there something I could do fairly easily and hit a prompt, because I don't have a ton of time uh, to stitch today. And as it turned out, one of my uh, bi-weekly challenges uh, was called Muppets, and what you were to do was to stitch on a whip that included something that was natural and something that was man-made. And you were to stitch a minimum of 200 stitches, a maximum of three to get the most points. So you know me, I'm going for three. And knowing that I had a shorter amount of time, if I needed to stop at two, I could have. So that was kind of what made me decide for one reason on this whip, because the, the number of stitches was not that bad, but also because this whip is an easy stitch. The pattern is so clear and it's large blocks of color. So when you need a lot of stitches, it's a go-to piece. So I'm talking about the 13th Colony by the Bay. This is the first of three patterns that I'm going to knit together uh, and stitch as one piece. And I had originally started this by doing clouds, tree, and clouds, and that's what I had done. So today, I came to the bottom of the tree and I started working my way over um, to get the bottom of this done over on the starting corner. And I got in 415 stitches. So <laughs> that's what this looks like now. So I've started the ground from the tree over to the far corner. So that is as wide as that piece is gonna be. So there's the margin that I'm gonna have. It'll be just enough to frame it. And I think it'll be just fine. But there you go. That is a total of three colors. Yep, three colors. And they are color completed across the bottom, which is great. So I stopped there since I had 415 stitches and decided that would be it for this piece for this month. Um, but it was a great stitch, an easy kind of stitch, and I'm really glad that I was able to get to it and do that. And so it met the prompt uh, in my um, Muppets challenge. And that means I only have one of the five prompts I was going for left to get, and that is that I have to stitch on something that's in a series. So I have decided that I'm gonna pull back out my Royal Games one at some point, maybe not right away, but I have another whole week to finish up this prompt. So I, um, I have time. <laughs> you know, to stitch on uh, Royal Games 1 for another 300 stitches, and that'll finish up that whole challenge. But today, I also used this By the Bay stitching to be the B in my birdhouse acrostic for the magazine uh, challenge. So, uh, that's awesome, because then I got another letter 
That means I only have two letters left, and those are R and D in the word bird. And R stands for Royal Games 1. So do you see a little trend there? If I do the Royal Games for my Muppet, it's in a different Facebook group than the magazine is. So uh, I can hit that prompt for both groups by stitching on it one time, and I love to do that. And then my um, D in the birdhouse acrostic uh, stands for dog in long dog sampler. And it, I think I have mentioned before, I need to stitch on pandemic by long dog sampler for my animal adventures. I need to stitch on it one time this month and I only have that one left to hit all the animals that I need to find for this month. And so when I do that, I will hit the last letter in birdhouse as well. So the next two big things I do for prompts will hit two prompts a piece, which will be great. Um, pandemic is also in one of my um, letters for the 24 hours of, of cross stitch acrostic, which is keep making X's and it's the key. Uh, I mean, it's the P in the word keep and that stands for pandemic. So whenever I stitch on that one, I'll hit three props with it. So that's sort of my plans going forward, but it won't be tomorrow. Mm -mm. Tomorrow is World Cross Stitch Day, and I had already planned with my friend Donna and my friend Mary that we were gonna have a new start for World Cross Stitch Day. And it's one we all had in our stash and that we all wanted to stitch. And it is a by the bay. It's called Needlesmith. And I'm starting it tomorrow, so we all are. So tomorrow when I come up here, that's the first thing I'm gonna do. And I will um, stitch on it to get it started. I don't know if I'll stitch on it all day or not. If I fall in love with it, I definitely will. But there's a pop-up challenge in one of the Facebook groups for World Cross Stitch Day. And it had several prompts that you could stitch for and you get free passes to use in September. So for these challenges that I like to do, um, these prompts will give you a free pass to, um, in one case, you can stitch the lowest number allowed, but you can count the highest number so you get more points that way and in another one um, you can do a whip of your choice instead of what meets the prompt and normally when you do that you have to do penalty stitches you have to stitch an extra 100 stitches well if you if you meet that prompt in the pop-up challenge the next time that you have to substitute in September for one of the prompts that you don't have something that meets you can use that pass that gives you the ability to not have to stitch the extra 100 penalty stitches and you still get full credit for it. So, those are the two I'm going for. There's a lot more. I think there's five or six in there, but when I read them, the, the uh, rewards that I would have gotten, I don't participate in those events. One was for a daily 30 challenge where you stitch 30 minutes a day. Um, on a project every day and I don't do that one because I change up every day and um, then you know there were a couple of other challenges um, that gave you rewards for monthly events other than animal adventure and I'm not doing the other monthly events because I'm trying to work really hard on getting some of my um, whips finished so that I don't carry as many whips as I have all the way into next year so anyway, I chose the two that would actually benefit me the most, and those are the two I'm going for. There is a time limit to this. Uh, we have to have posted everything by midnight this coming Sunday. So we have a good whole weekend to do it. Um, but I would love to try to get those done uh, Friday because I have a stitching meetup on Saturday and I have an event, it's my son's birthday this weekend and we're gonna celebrate it with him Sunday and so I don't know that I'll get much stitching done on Sunday. So I may get my new start tomorrow and I may have to do these two prompts tomorrow in order to get my uh, rewards. 
so I may not be able to stitch on my new start all day long. That's all I'm saying. Long explanation for that, sorry. Anyway, I hope you're having a great uh, week. I hope you're getting a lot of stitching done. We have World Cross Stitch Day tomorrow, so I hope you are celebrating with either a uh, concentrated stitch on a whip you wanna push forward or a new start on something that you would like. I felt like Needlesmith was a great choice because it has to do with the fact that I'm a cross stitcher. And um, so I was delighted that um, Donna and Mary said they would start it with me tomorrow. Whatever you do tomorrow, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it goes well, and I hope the frog stays a long, long way away. Happy stitching, everybody. Good evening, everyone. This is Dina. It is August the 12th, and I am here to give you a stitching report for my new start on World Cross Stitch Day. Oh, Donna and Mary and I all agreed we were gonna start a new by the bay pattern, new to us, um, called I Am a Needlesmith. And I just think it's lovely, and I thought what a great stitch for World Cross Stitch Day. And um, it's, it's called for DMC, so it was easy enough to kit it up. And I apologize, I used a fabric of the month that I just received recently from Be Stitch Me Fabrics. And somehow, when I took it out of the envelope, the name of the fabric was on the envelope, on the label, on the outside of the envelope, not on the fabric. And not realizing that, I put my fabric in my kitted bag for my project, and I threw the, uh, the little plastic bag away, and so, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it. It is a fabric of the month, so it may not be in her regular lineup anyway. <laughs> but if any of you are in that monthly program and you recognize this fabric, you can see it's got spots every so often of the color in it. But I felt like it was a beautiful neutral that would look very similar to the background and you don't stitch the sky and you don't stitch the ground around her feet and dress. That is to look like sand, I believe. So I thought this color would do really well. So I actually got a pretty good start on it. I got 380 stitches in my new start for today. It's, um, <clears throat> I apologize. I, for some reason, I'm losing my voice today. I don't know why. Allergies, I think, but um, anyway, I got it done, yay! I'm really excited about it, and uh, I'm actually gonna use it for a pop-up challenge in one of the Facebook groups I'm in. Um, the question that I use this one for, you could pick a whip of your choice for the pop-up challenge, but this one I stitched, uh, I had to stitch at least 200 stitches, and I wound up, as I said, getting 380, so I more than met the requirement. But basically, you are to tell your favorite designer and why they're your favorite designer. And I don't know about y'all, but I have a lot of designers that I really equally enjoy. So I just picked one today. <laughs> today, the one I would say I would enjoy stitching would be hands-on design because I love her sense of humor. I really, really do. So um, I used that as my favorite today, and the reason was because I loved her whimsical designs with her wicked sense of humor. I just love it a lot. So, um, that pop-up one has been met. I have another pop-up challenge that I can meet. You do 100 stitches, and you tell what is your favorite type of finish. So if I get to do that one before the deadline on Sunday night, I will definitely come back and tell you about it. So, this piece did not meet any other prompts other than my pop-up challenge. But then again, I haven't read the um, new challenge for next week. It came out today, um, and, and I need to go look at it and see if I wanna try to participate in it. Um, so I'll let you know if I do that. I still have a few letters uh, in my acrostics to meet. I've got two in the um, magazine one, and I've got uh, five in the 24 hours of cross stitch one because they have 12 
and so I'm missing uh, a few more of those. But I got till the end of the month to get that done, so I'll be okay. Tomorrow's our stitching meetup, so I am about to pull out my cards that list all my projects on them and my prompts and see what is it that I need to take with me that A, either helps me meet a prompt or B, is gonna be easy enough stitching to do in a crowd. So what I'm stitching tomorrow, I don't know yet, but when I do get some progress tomorrow, I hope to come back and share it with you. Tomorrow's also my son's birthday. Happy birthday, Jeremy. Uh, I don't think he watches my channel, but someday he might. <laughs> and he'll know I wished him happy birthday. Um, we are actually going to celebrate together on Sunday. I went and bought the cake today. And um, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, other than that, I'll just be stitching. And I hope you are too. Happy stitching, everybody. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. It is Saturday, it is August the 13th. It is my son's birthday. Happy birthday, JT. <laughs> um, I just got off the phone with him actually. <clears throat> got to wish him a happy birthday today. Um, I had a stitching meetup today and we had 17 or 19 of us there and um, a couple of people came in late and left early, so I lost a little bit of track there. But anyway, it was a great group. And um, we stitched, and there were a few people that had questions uh, about things that they wanted to catch up on or ask people's opinion of um, handling uh, overdyed threads and how do you prefer to stitch them and um, <clears throat> how do you place your initials and dates when you're stitching a project and and you might want to put that on there. How do you figure out where to put them? And so people were able to weigh in on that, on what how they do it. And it was just a lovely time of exchange. And I, I really enjoyed that. It was a great group of people. So I took my Enchanted Alphabet today and I had a goal. My goal was to backstitch the little girl's dress. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> And I did. Now, I will tell you, I backstitched it in exactly the color and the number of strands that were called for. Because in some cases, it was for two strands. And in other places, it was one strand, but it was the same color. And when I got through backstitching this whole thing, I asked the ladies at my table, I said, be honest now, can you even see this backstitching? And they looked at it, and none of them could see it. Up close, you can see it. They couldn't see it far away. I don't know <laughs> if it makes that much difference or not, but it's done. How about that? So uh, I finished the back stitching on the dress, which was my goal for today. And then I actually got the opportunity to stitch another letter. So here she is. That's her completely finished. And see, I don't think you can tell much difference. I mean, maybe it looks a little smoother around the outer edge where you you know, backstitch all around the dress. Um, but there is backstitching. Let me show you. You tell me what you can see on the camera. But there is backstitching on her sleeve, her cuff, her sleeve, across here, and then all the way around. So, I mean, I can really see it, but I, I don't know that it's backstitching so much as it is shading. I think the shading does a great deal. Maybe the back stitching makes it smoother around here, makes it look a little more solid. I don't know. But it is so subtle. It is just so subtle. And then the other thing I got done today was the letter Q, right up next to her head. So, <clears throat> so there you go, O, P, Q, R, and then I've got the last of the letters, and I've got the bunny rabbit to put at the bottom. But my goal today was met, and I'm really, really happy with that. I wasn't trying to meet a prompt with it. I just wanted to get it done because it needed to be done. And, um, and I'm happy that I finished it. I'm glad I got it done. And getting the cue also done was just gravy. That was awesome. <laughs> I enjoyed that. So I'm going to put this away now and let you get back to what you were doing. Had a great 
stitching meetup. Uh, tomorrow will be uh, a day of rest and uh, time with my son for his birthday in person. Uh, <clears throat> we're going out of town to meet him, so that'll be great. And then I'll get back here and do some more stitching. I hope you're having a great weekend, and I'll see you soon. Happy stitching, everybody. Well, hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Dina, and this segment today is gonna be about what I've been reading and listening to on audiobooks. So I'll tell you the first one because that's in order how I read them. But the first one was the second in the series by James Patterson. Um, the first one was The Black Book, and this one was called The Red Book. And the Black Book was a book of uh, addresses they were looking for, contacts of clients from a brothel that they were trying to, to locate. And uh, it's a detective book. The characters, the main character is a detective. He has a twin sister who's a detective. His father is, was the chief of detectives until the end of the black book, the first book. At the end of the first book, um, the main character winds up remembering what happened the night that his partner uh, was killed and he was shot in the head himself. And he remembers, <laughs> and he also remembers he has proof. And so it's a very climatic end to the book, and he wins the case, he's, he's set free, and the uh, Red Book story picks up after he's been set free, his uh, testimony of what really happened winds up shaking up the entire detective uh, department of the of the police and it puts several people in jail including um, his father and um, I don't want to ruin the first book for you because uh, I don't want to tell you who did what or why they're in jail or that kind of thing it's worth the read to find that out but actually the red book is a book that this detective runs across in his own home that his father had hidden and it is uh, it looks like a ledger and he doesn't know what it's for at first but he winds up finding out so this book picks up several months after the end of the black book and he is being um, allowed to come back to work and he knows that there's not going to be a welcoming committee out for him because his testimony took down police officers. These detectives went to jail. And even though it was the right thing to do, and even though they were guilty, he knows that there's a brotherhood. Um, and they don't like it when they have to testify against each other, and they don't like people that do that. So he knows he's not going to be very popular when he goes back to work. So he's shocked. When he goes back to work and finds out that he's been promoted to a new task force that has been formulated uh, they have a crime spree going on in in one of the sections of their town and they've put together a task force to try to deal with it there's a drive-by shooting very early in the book and he and his partner are assigned the case and they solve it within 24 hours and he is a hero and everybody's excited and it's sort of like he's been now brought back into the fold because he's made him look so good except he knows that it doesn't feel right there's something about it that he feels was too easy um why would why would the evidence why would someone keep the murder weapon in their trunk of their car their personal vehicle it was just too easy you know he felt like it was set up and it was you you know that there's a big difference in the way this one's written and the first one in the first one uh, the black book you only have the view from uh, the detective there is you don't know anything else that he doesn't know you learn it when he learns it when he has no memory of it you don't know it either and when he finally remembers it that's the first you learn of it in the red book that's totally different. You have his 
view, you hear what, you know what he knows, you know his thoughts and what he's trying to do, but you also hear from other characters in the book. So it's more of an omnipresent view and you know things he does not know, which helps you cheer him on, I guess. I don't know. I kind of liked it better. I liked knowing more information. It made the story interesting to me. It, um, I think, lets you learn about the other characters even more because you're actually hearing their thoughts and what's going on with them uh, and not just his view of something. So I kind of like the way this one was written better. Um, I will tell you there's some triggers in here. Um, what appears to be a turf war murder, a drive-by, turns out to not be that at all. It turns out to be human trafficking. And that could be a serious trigger for someone. And there's uh, a bit of violence in the book. Not, not overt and not horrible, but it's there. The thread is there. And so if that's a trigger for you, I wouldn't read the book either. But it's a good whodunit. And um, they're not... There's not many twists and turns. There's like one main twist at the end. Um, but I think it was, um, I would give it on a scale of one to five. I would give it about a three and a half, maybe 375, something like that. It was not one of my favorite books. It wasn't one of my favorite James Patterson books. Um, we'll have to see if the third one, there's, I think there's a third one in the series, but I haven't seen it yet. I haven't found it yet. Uh, but I would read it just to wrap it up. You know, I'd want to wrap up about this detective story. If it's a wrap up, I don't know if he's going to keep that character going or not. But anyway, decent book, but not something I wouldn't read it again. How about that? Um, the second one, though, was a joy. It was a joy. It, uh, it had been recommended by some of you, and it's called A Man Named o Uwe, and it's by Frederick Backman. And it's the third one of his books I've read recently, and so I'm getting used to his style. Uh, this book is also written in the style of uh, present day, past tense. Present day, past tense. So you, you live in the present at the first moment, uh, and then the next chapter you're in the past learning something. Um, by the end of the book, you've gotten all the history, you know, up in Mr. Uh, Ove's uh, life and you understand why he is the way that he is. He is a very um, reticent to change, you know, wants everything to stay the same, doesn't like new technology, um, just wants to be left alone kind of person, uh, doesn't want a lot of interruptions, and yet um, a new family moves in next door or right down the street from him and it's uh, a husband a wife who's expecting and they already have two little girls one is three and one is seven when they move in and so you learn how he gets to know the family you learn how they impact his life um, Ove is a good man he is kind-hearted and he is he always chooses to do the right thing, even when it's inconvenient for him, even if it doesn't help him. In one of the stories you learn in the book, uh, he, his neighbors at that time had a house fire, and he's, he ran out and saw them coming out of the house, the husband and wife. And when the husband got the wife situated, he ran back in the house. And Ove could see him struggling to move a bookcase that had fallen over was blocking a door. And Ove could also see that the fire was coming across the yard and was going to hit his house if he didn't hurry and get the hose and wet it all down. He was His house was going to be in, engulfed in flames as well. Then he realized that the man next door was fighting so hard to get back in the house because his grandson was in there. And Ove made the choice to go help him and get the little boy out, knowing that he was sacrificing his home. And, and he did. His home burnt. So, uh, but that's what he did. That's, that's his character. So you really like that part of him so, so much. 
And the funny part to me is how stuck in the mud he is. You know, he's just, he's stuck. And he so, so does not want to move forward into the future. Um, he is a funny guy and his, the sense of humor, Bagman's sense of humor is well played in his, in this character. I really, really liked it. Um, he of course, you know, gets to know the family and others and, um, it's just a delightful story of him finding new purpose in his life based on the people that he allows in. And um, it's a great character development story. There's no murder mystery. There's not a, um, there's really not a big mystery at all. It's just getting to know all these people and how they interact together and the good that he accomplishes in spite of himself. <laughs> I guess that's a good way to put it, in spite of his own self. Anyway, I fell in love with him. I think he's a great old man, and um, I just, I really, really enjoyed the book, and I would highly recommend it. So on that one, you know, that that's a much higher score. That would be up around nine or 10. So. There you go. My, my recommendation would be um, A Man Called Ove. I would, I would recommend that one for you. So that's what I've been reading. I just wanted to share that with you. And um, I know a lot of you like to do as I do. I listen to audiobooks while I stitch. And, um, and now that I finished the book, I'm going to go catch up on my floss tube and do some stitching. So enjoy your reading and enjoy your stitching. into the pet store. My little sled dog pulling me in the pet store. Oh my goodness. Oh. Here we go. Nope, nope, nope. Here goes the line. Come on. Come on. Nope, nope. Did you get one already? Oh my gosh, she snuck a treat. Right, get it up off the floor. Come here. Nope, we can't go down that aisle. There's already taken one treat. Oh, look, leave those bones alone. Let's keep going. Come on, let's go down the cat aisle. No. Nope. Did you get a bone? No, come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go check out the cat aisle. Girl. All right, she's just window shopping. Great Kia. We have to be careful on this aisle. It has the buffet. We've already snuck one. I know. Don't stay away from the buffet. Nope. That's the buffet. 
Gotta stay. Gotta stay away from the buffet. Woo, we made it. <laughs>